So here we are in Omniverse Create. Let's go into the Asset Store. And I'm going to filter straight off the bat by Sketchfab models. And we get kind of like all the free Sketchfab models. Um, let's start off by finding a location. Um, Grohl Bridge. So I'm going to double click to download that. Let's save it in a location. Right click New Folder and Location. That's not how you spell it, but that's fine. Select. Let's just go a yes to that, please. And let's go ahead and find some sort of car. And uh, this Datsun. Mm, yeah, let's download that one. <laughs> so the same process there. Select, let it download. Now what we're going to do is come into the content, find the location. No worries. Uh, double click on that one. And then let's open up our Rickroll Bridge. What are we looking at? Yeah, right. So it's a photo scanned asset, which is not too bad. I'm sure we could do something with it. My big concern is, is the materials might not be set up correctly. So what I'm going to do is go right click, create mesh cube. And we can see that there's no shadows coming down. So if we were to go into a sunny sky, we've got no shadow. Now that is because um, on these scanned assets, the material, if we click on this, it's got an emissive color, but it's kind of like still being emissive. So it's not capturing the, it's not being able to capture that shadow because of the emissive. What's the correct process? No idea. What's the workaround? <laughs> so <laughs> let's delete that. I am going to select everything with control A. Let's go file, export. And in location, I actually just going to export this as an FBX Rickroll bridge save. I actually just want to, I want to export materials and textures and then let's go export. Now we've got a materials folder with, uh, with an FBX as well. What I'm actually going to do is just go file new, don't save please. And from here, let me just delete this uh, ground plane from here. I'm going to click and drag our model, our mesh. Sorry. There we go. And over here on the right hand side of the transformation, I'm just going to reset the transformations. So you can see it looks pretty much the same. If I left click on our mesh here, click on the material, let's come down to emissive and we can see that we've got an emissive map and that's uh, enabled emissions. So let's turn that off. Now you can see how everything's gone gray, which is fine. And I'm just going to get rid of our mask there. I mean, our material into the albedo map. Let's find that texture now that we've exported. And now you can see we've got textures in here. Lovely. So from here, I'm actually just going to add it into the roughness. I'm going to add it into the metallic because we can. And I mean, ambient occlusion, why not? And I am fairly happy with how that looks. Now we are in the interactive mode already default. Let's go into a sunny sky. Look at that. I mean, it's, it's pretty good. Let's go file save as, and from here, I'm just going to call this a location. And now you'll see that it's saved as a USD file, which is cool. Save. And there's our file. Now let's jump over into the Datsun and we'll check that out. Double click to open. And let's check this car out. The car looks quite nice just by itself. We've got the bonnet selected and we can see that we've got very much nothing special in terms of materials. What I am going to do though, is this is where we can go a little bit crazy. I'm going to jump over into interactive path tracing and we can see that it seems a little bit um, flat and not very eh, whatevs. Omniverse comes with a massive list of materials. So if I were to type in car, there is this chameleon paint. Let's throw that on there and let's just have that material load. <laughs> oh, that looks sick. Um, I am going to leave everything else. Everything else looks quite nice. I wonder if there is an interior. So I'm just going to quickly hide the mesh. There is an interior. So let's go ahead and find a glass material. Let's go maybe a clear glass and we'll pop that on there. Let that material load. Now, while that's loading, um, I reckon we could make these handles and all this trim pop as well. So let's go ahead and find a chrome color. Chrome onto there, please. And we'll just make that pop as well. That looks gorgeous. So from here, file, save as. 
into asset library car and we'll call the Datsun and we'll go save done. But of course I forgot now that we've saved that as a USD file, it's kind of like wiped all those materials. And that's because if we select kind of like the carbon, we can see here, this is where all our textures are being saved. So if we really wanted to, like we did before, we exported the car that brought out all the textures and then we can update all these file paths if we wanted to. Let's go ahead and select everything, file, export. <laughs> now back in the main file, we've got all our textures. So kind of like the brake light, let's kind of expand on that texture base. And I'm gonna go ahead and just start updating all these. Just click and drag them into their spots and uh, just give me a sec. And just a quick look at the car, it is looking legit. File, new. Let's delete that ground plane. File, save as. And we're just gonna make this our uh, scene. From the asset library now, I'm gonna go into our location, which I can't spell. I'm gonna click and drag our USD location. We'll dump that into our place. I am gonna get rid of this ground mesh. Back onto the location object, I'm gonna just reset the locations. And let's have a look. Is it actually sitting on the ground plane? It doesn't look like it. So where this grid here is our ground plane. So let's kind of just take it up. We don't need to do this, but I'm just kind of being a little bit a fussy buddy. Fussy buddy? Now, how am I gonna block this scene? I'm not gonna worry about these cars. I reckon we're gonna go something like here, unless there's something else on this side. Oh, there it is. I reckon, yeah, we park the car here-ish. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's bring in our car. Now we're gonna go into the USD, click and drag and slap that one there. Is that to scale? It seems a little bit small, but that's fine. I'm just gonna increase the scale 1.1. Oops, let's lock that scale and go 1.1. There we go, it's just a little bit bigger. Let's give it maybe a bit of a rotation. And there we go, so we're gonna have like a glory shot of something like that um, however let's set up our scene now so from here I'm gonna go into real time go into the interactive path tracing because we want to make it look pretty as and make sure we save it click on the environments tab now I'm not going to use these ones up here because they I can't remember the reason why but I was told not to <laughs> I'm actually gonna pick one of these. Now there is a city one in here that I want to use. Let's go ahead and click and drag this one into our scene. Yeah, I'll buy that for a dollar. That kind of blends in quite well. Now let's go ahead and I like it here-ish. I like this shot. Now what I can actually do is up into where it says perspective because we don't have a camera, I can go create from view. So let's go ahead and create a camera from view. And we've got our first camera. For now, I'm just gonna make that a bit bigger. Let's jump into our camera. Now, I really like the position of this camera for now. What I can actually do is click the camera button and go lock. I now can't move that camera. Oh my goodness, do you know how good that feature is? No longer can I be in a camera and move around. This is one of the beautiful things about um, NVIDIA is that they've been working really hard to try and build up this tool and they are taking community input so well. So now what we can actually do is I actually am gonna unlock that. And let's go ahead and animate this camera a little bit. So from here, I'm gonna come into a window. Let's go into animation and we're just gonna go into the curve editor. So if we click on the curve editor, this is kind of like where we can keyframe it. Now I would not use this for complex animations such as animating a character. This is more for very basic animations such as moving a camera. So with the camera selected, I am just going to press the plus sign to add a key and we can see that we've had all our um, keyframes added in here. Let's now reposition the camera a little bit. So when you're moving the camera around, if you see it's moving a bit fast, you can use the mouse wheel to slow down or mouse wheel forward to speed up. Oh jeez. Q to go down, E to go up, and then you got like strafing, blah, blah, blah. You know how it all works. 
So from here, let's just slow that right down. And if I want to double the speed for a little bit, I can just press shift. Um, let me just quickly open up the timeline so we can actually change our frame range. to so let's say 1200, even though we're not going 1200, because that would be a lot of frames to render. Let's do five seconds, five times 25 is 125. Good job, Marco. That took you a little bit too long to work out. So let's go to about probably fame 125 and I want to move into about here, something like that, I reckon. Let's go ahead and add a keyframe in. And then if we kind of zoom out of here, we should be able to see that we've kind of got this. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Nice, nice. I like that. That's a pretty cool movement. I wonder if I can just select all these and come up here and have this one come in as linear. So when we press play, it's already moving in at the right speed and then it'll slow down. Nice. Now what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna lock this camera now, jump back into perspective. There we go. And I'm going to go maybe, yeah, let's go something like this. And we'll make this at about a frame 120. We haven't selected a camera yet. I'm going to go perspective and create from view. Select our camera too. Let's add in a bunch of new keyframes and then about frame 250. Let's kind of bring that puppy down. All right, let's plus that one in there. Let's zoom out a little bit. I want this to be linear. And so we've kind of got this. And then let's just do, I'm just gonna do probably one or two more cameras. Now for this shot here, you can kind of see how I've come around and gone like so. I think it's a little bit too quick. We're gonna make this actually a lot longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and select everything and I can come in here. Now, unfortunately there isn't a scale function at the moment, but it is something I have put in. So actually I'm just gonna select my keyframes here and what I can do is lock them so they only move horizontally. And I'm gonna move this one to about 160 and then this lot here to about uh, 230. Now the cool thing is if I want to kind of see my whole graph, I can select this button here, frame all, and then we can see our whole, all our frames. So let's have a look. How's that looking now? Is it a little bit better? I think we might even animate at this point in here and we'll add in that keyframe. There we go, that's looking, oh my goodness, that's looking gorgeous. So now we've got three cameras. Let's kind of put that together. How do you think we could do that? I tell you how, window, animation, <laughs> sequencer, sorry. Now from here, what I can do is I can drag my camera one and we'll plop that one into there, okay? So we've got this shot and then we've got our camera one. So if I pop that into here, it's only going to represent the keyframes, like the range of keyframes. So for instance, if I were to go back into camera one, we can actually see that in the curve editor that this here is our frame range, yet it starts off at zero in the sequencer. So it's only taken into account frame 125 to 155. So we've got that, then we've got that, and then we're gonna finish it off by throwing this nice long shot in. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So you can see how it's kind of like jumping in between cameras. If we don't want it to jump in between cameras just for now, I can press this blue button here on the left and it'll just stay with the camera that I have selected. Now, one thing we didn't really talk about is camera setup. So I'm gonna select my first camera and we're gonna increase the size of that. I'm just gonna unlock it. I want a bit of a depth of field. So I'm gonna go one 
on the camera f-stop what I want to zoom in on I'm just going to select our sample focus distance click and drag there we go we'll click and drag make sure we select our car nice now what we can do as well is because obviously the camera is going to be moving and this might get out of focus eh, it might be okay let's just leave it as is but we can actually animate our focus distance and so on and so forth so I can go right click set key let's uh, go ahead and lock that camera before we forget and we'll do the same for these other cameras and then we have it we've got this really nice looking shot render settings from here top right render settings let's start off in common now I've got a whole bunch of settings we can change here I am going to turn on global volumetrics effect now you can see off into the distance we can no longer see our HDRI so this multiplied density uh, I'm going to lower that now you can move these sliders you can actually move any slider but if you actually want to type in a number you hold control and click and now you can actually type in a number beautiful that is looking good for me I am not going to change any of that from here I'm going to jump to path tracing sampling and caching I'm actually going to turn both of these off um, and hopefully the render will look a lot smoother denoising don't really leave I don't really touch sorry most of this I will leave but in the post processing is where you can get a little bit crazy now auto exposure I can turn that on you know do that kind of jazz color correction don't really need to I like the way it looks I have been playing around with a chromatic aberration so if I turn that on you can kind of see how the colors get a little bit wonky but this is where we can kind of come in and go 0 0.01 0 0.01 0 0.01 uh, I've got it the wrong way around so let's go into the negatives and what this will do is more around the outside of the image we'll add that you know colorful beautiful mm. that is so good we will turn on a bit of motion blur with the FTT blue, FFT bloom we can turn that on and it gets kind of like everything gets blown out a little bit which is okay but I actually I'm gonna probably scale it down a smidgen to maybe 0.03 just so it's not as intense and uh, let's yeah probably just leave it at that make sure we save and now we can come in and talk about our render settings so render settings movie capture that's the one sorry let's open up our movie capture and now we have kind of like the settings we want to go for so the frame rate is 24 frames a second we might just change that to 25 um i am gonna leave it as you know just hd captured frames we are gonna bring it back to 575 so 575 let's just change that back to hd for some reason um rendering preset so this might capture you out change that to either use current or interactive path over here is the sampling so that's kind of in blender sampling for those of you who sampling <laughs> I might just bump that up to 256 let's now find a place to save it and uh, now we can capture sequence one thing is the reason why I selected the render preset as the actual render engine rather than use current because as this kind of renders it's going to be rendering this image as well so I'm actually going to change this back to real time and get stuff let's just make sure of that and now we click capture sequence and we go to town and voila